Today, we are going to talk about a player who was once a Goliath in the Overwatch contenders world, turned to a very sad young boy who then became a devastating creature amongst the greater lands of the Overwatch player base. As we all know, 2023 was the final year of Overwatch League and one of the largest years of pure disappointment when it comes to talent. The infamous American Tornado roster bombed out like no tomorrow, but honestly, if you rated it high, those holes in your head need to be checked out as soon as possible. There were glaring issues with Toronto Defiant right from the get-go. And also, some of those players who were in the league in the previous year were being as overrated as In-N-Out Burger is. Then we have O2 Blast, the fabled squadron supposed to dominate everyone and everything due to their success in Contenders. And as we all know, Korean Contenders is a different beast compared to anywhere else in the world since mostly all the best talent comes from there. A team performing as well as O2 did was a really big deal. So when Shock picked up the gang, Junbin, Max, Hisong, and Vindime to be alongside Finn and Proper, people were very happy to see this team play in Tier 1. The hype behind each of these players were at an all-time high. Proper just came off of winning MVP and Rookie of the Year. We wanted to see the LeBron of Overwatch do it for the boys back home. Shock just got second place in 2022. Vindime was on Seoul who got number one seed in APAC. Junbin, Max, and Hisong were all kicking ass on O2 Blast and Contenders. But our focus of today, Hisong, was supposed to be proper junior. Not as explosive, but mechanically amazing and actually holding a candle to proper when they played against each other in Contenders, according to the APAC spokesperson, also known as Avril, who the APAC Champion Series broadcast should get on as a caster, but we don't want to do that apparently. So seeing Hisong and Proper come together was a dream come true if you like a good DPS lineup. There were warning signs though. I'm not a person who gets overhyped. I actually like to wait and see how the person performs before I start tearing my clothes off about how amazing they are. Someone can hype them up all they want to, but players can easily fail as we all know. The meta we were heading into was Tracer Sombra, where neither Proper or Hisong were known for playing it, creating this strange shift of who plays Tracer, who plays Sombra, where neither of them look comfortable on Sombra, and both of their best heroes were Tracer. Some days Proper plays it, and other days Hisong plays it. It was a mess. I would say put Proper on Tracer, who's the carry hero, and at this point in time, you're going to want the person who just won MVP mostly playing Tracer throughout the previous year, fielding it over Hisong. If there was one more person in the 2023 Shocks DPS rotation to let Proper have the ball and then swap around him, that would have worked perfectly. Or, you know, if one of them was good at Sombra. Hisong could have come in for his specific hero picks, which would have sucked for the kid, but when you sign two players that have the same exact hero pool, on top of having weird ass coaching choices, adding one more player would have been the only solution, I think, if it was even possible to save the sinking ship. No one understood the coaching choices whatsoever, having Junbin come in to play off tank heroes when you have a more than capable off tank and Max on the bench, then Max comes in to play Winston when Junbin is supposed to be on the team for that. The team was just so dysfunctional, it's actually wild what was going on, like a Reddit fanfiction level of events. Shock was struggling badly. If Proper didn't come in to save the day or the other team wasn't throwing, the chances of victory were very slim. Hisong had some moments of brilliance, but it was nothing compared to what was promised. When the streets are saying Proper Junior's coming, we expect Proper Junior. In Contenders, Hisong was really good, so I'm not sure if he was getting bullied by the older Koreans on Shock, telling them they wished his dad pulled out because he missed a pulse bomb on a map. I don't know. There surely was some sort of issue going on behind the scenes, and some of the other teammates' performances were not good either. I don't know what Vindime was doing a lot of the time. He was off doing his own thing, uncoordinated with his team. He was pulling a silver three and getting picked first almost every fight. Some maps, Hisong's monitor was off, Finn was out to lunch, Proper was a stone cold killer, and tank musical chairs. It's really hard not to harp on how awful this team was performing and should be a lesson of wait before getting excited about anything, go into every circumstance with an open mind, because outcomes like this are definitely possible. I think we all knew Vindime was going to get dropped once midseason arrived. 
the classic halfway through the year team building was commencing and unsurprisingly he was dropped. Along with He Song, which also could have been seen coming, he was underperforming heavily, sharing a hero pool with Proper. They seem to have had the conclusion of either picking He Song or Proper, and obviously they picked Proper, letting He Song become a free agent. Most just thought like that was really unfortunate. He Song didn't live up to the hype. And again, I'm guessing there was a lot of intangible stuff going on behind the scenes. 2023 really seemed to be the mental abuse battle royale. He Song and Vindime 100% got top five, but we all know Dong Hawk got the victory royale. I'm sure the Chio versus Dong Hawk was an ultimate behind the scenes scuffle. We all thought this would be the end of Hisong. When you get dropped mid-season in that manner, you either need nepotism to come in and save the day or be a big name to get picked up again. But we were actually wrong. At this exact moment, Vancouver Titans needed a new player. The Overwatch community's equivalent of the devil in Aspire was dropped because of his allegations and everything else brought forth. As the community was yelling for him to be put into a monster truck tire and rolled down a mountain, Vancouver Titans saw Hisong as a free agent and picked him up. This was really good for his career, but there was also more issues. Again, both DPS players' best heroes are Genji, Echo, and Tracer, and I'm not even sure if Sugar Free is a capable hitscan at this level, and we all know that Heesong isn't, so they just didn't have a hitscan player. Vancouver Titans were going to have to work around it, which they actually did to moderate success. When Heesong came in to play Tracer, Echo, or Genji, even Soldier, he looked really good, getting much more value than he ever did on Shock, showing there was actually something there within him. Of course, Heesong wasn't giving everyone wedgies and hanging them from a tree, but his performances were much improved. My only assumption can be, it's strange how when you take a player out of a poor environment and stick them into a good one, they perform better. I'm sure Heesong going into the office every day and watching crusty box cutouts of himself in Vindime probably wasn't very mentally healthy. Now that Heesong could breathe without someone yelling in his ear every hour, his powers could flourish. But even with this, we still had another really large problem. Just the little fact that uh, nobody spoke Korean on this team aside from Faith, who couldn't translate anything. According to Punk, coming from the most reliable Overwatch podcast in Uncoachable, Heesung couldn't really talk to the team since obviously he didn't speak English whatsoever. Macro strategy in-game probably became more difficult since it's hard to make plans with someone who doesn't speak your language, but honestly, Heesung looked a lot better than he did on the shock even with this language barrier. There was an uptick in his performances and that's what really mattered, a slight redemption coming from the kid. Essentially showing the world he is a good player and people would keep their eyes on him and maybe give him a chance on another team at a later date. I think the best part of the season for Heesong was during play-ins where Titans 3-0'd the shock, allowing Heesong to give them an eat shit and die moment, if the kid even cared about revenge. Probably not, but still. He defeated his old team twice in that second half of the season, and that play-ins match knocked Shock out where they missed playoffs for the first time since 2018. Titans ended up losing to the London Spitfire in a really good match. It went to map 5. Both teams played very well, knocking Titans out of the play-ins and ending their season. Honestly, Heesong made a fantastic choice joining this team because he really redeemed what could have been a bad taste in everyone's mouth. He really showed people he is a good player. If he just ended with a shock and called it quits there, well, we may possibly not see what came next. When the Champion Series rosters got announced and we saw Wack, now Crazy Raccoons, with Junbin, Max, Heesong, Lip, Chorong, and Shu, that was an eye-opening roster to say the least. Most people put them at default number two due to having Chorong, Lip, and Shu. With half the WAC team, we were like, yay, and the other half, we thought, why? Because of the seasons Junbin and Max just had on Shock, it was not good, but to be fair, you could blame the coaches, honestly, forcing them to play opposite roles entirely, or just opposite of their hero pools was stupid. There were some good moments, like when Junbin came out to ball, he looked really damn good at it, but overall, it was just a mess. And no one knew what to think of them going forward. Song was also still a question mark on how he would perform, and granted, these three young sailors did get second place in that Flash Ops Korea tournament, 
but as a whole, we wanted to see more. The people tossing out whys were more reasonable when they joined WAC, I feel. When you have these other three players in Lip, Shu, and Chorong, where two of them are champions and Shu is one of the best flex support players on Earth, and you stick players alongside them who people are still unsure of, eyebrows are obviously going to be raised. Thankfully, the glow up we got to witness here was truly something else. During the first Champion Series meta, Junbin was one of the best Doom players in the region. Some behind the scenes were saying he was the best in the region. When Max came in to play Sigma or D.Va, he looked really good, pissing in everyone's cereal bowls, and a complete level up in comparison to what we saw on Shock. I'm sure these guys actually playing the heroes they are good at helps a lot too. No more Junbin D.Va or Maxwell Winston Hogwash. Song was playing a lot of Echo in the beginning where he truly looked in the zone, being one of the best players throughout Champion Series Korea, and this stemmed to Tracer and Genji as well. When he fielded those heroes, Song was looking to be one of the best consistently as well. It was not a one or two match affair. Tracer especially, that looked world class. He was putting out truly dominating statistics, carrying the fights at some point, and he's taking spotlight over lip on DPS occasionally, which is like, you know, not easy to do, especially compared to the standards he song was put at under a year earlier. He was honestly just seen as mediocre and viewers assumed he was an overhyped piece of filth. Then he slowly started to build himself back up on the Titans, and apparently, in reality, this whole time, he had the beast inside of him. We just needed to wait for his monster to awaken, and for him not to be yelled at all the time, and be on a team that speaks his language. But it eventually happened. Throughout the entirety of Champion Series, Heesong has constantly been improving and improving, becoming one of the best flex DPS players you could ask for. It helps a lot that Lip has a very good tracer, so we can see Heesong play other heroes and flesh out his pool. But of course, Lip will play Hitscan and Heesong will play what he's good at, and it seems the environment is good for him, he's comfortable, and a mechanical beast. I'm not saying he's leaps and bounds better than the other people around him, but the progression has truly been interesting to watch over the last year, seeing him be hyped up, struggles heavily, and honestly, a part of me wonders if we weren't in a Tracer Sombra meta, if the shock would have been doomed regardless. Who knows? With the tank substitutions and backline performance, most likely. He then moves to Titans to showcase some more improvements, and then finally, he surrounds himself in a situation where he's able to speak the same language as his teammates and isn't ridiculed endlessly on a day-to-day -day basis, and miraculously, he looks to be in his fabled contender's form. I guess the lesson learned here is just put someone in an environment where they can succeed, and they will. What a crazy philosophy that is. Absolutely unbelievable. Wack has beaten Team Falcons twice so far, and Falcons got their one victory in the finals of Korea, but these three former Shock players are truly coming into form, becoming what they were promised to be at the beginning of 2023. The Raccoons have barely struggled throughout most of Champion Series, and of course they had that upset loss to Yeti a few weeks back, but overall, not many people have been standing a chance against the Raccoons. Heesong has gotten player of the match like 800 times, having fantastic performances against other great flex DPS players in the region, ones like Alfie, Knife, Viper, Proper, and Stalker. He's holding his own against some big men. Of course, it's not PGE, but it's still something. Aside from Yeti, the only team the Raccoons have lost to is Falcons, so needless to say, these guys have really leveled up. I just wanted to highlight Heesong specifically because his journey was more interesting considering how he was a weaker point on the shock and now he's a player anyone would want on their roster for flex DPS, a true threat to the world. Overall, I'm glad to see these three players are showcasing they weren't overhyped and they're finally living up to their original expectations. Going forward, I'm hoping Heesong can give us more good performances, especially at the upcoming APAC LAN. Crazy Raccoons could get revenge on Falcons, but we won't know until we see it. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on Heesung. Do you feel like he has reached his peak, or does he still have more room to grow? Also, who would win in a fistfight, Donghawk or Chio? Make sure to leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching to the end. Make sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, check out my last video on the greatest DPS player to ever touch Overwatch 2. And remember, if you ever lose a match, blame it on your team because it's not your fault.